Hello, welcome to Bourbon and a Baby. My name is Jay. Max is not going to be joining us today because right now Max is at the zoo checking out all the animals. And here I am in my basement filming videos by myself. Okay, so for this video, uh, I took inspiration uh, a month or two back. Um, Chad and Sarah over at It's Bourbon Night did a video about uh, trends in bourbon that uh, that they're over that that that, that they don't that they don't really appreciate. And so I kind of wanted to piggyback off of that and kind of throw mine out there. So these are things in the bourbon uh, community and the bourbon industry uh, or the whiskey industry overall in general that just kind of really grind my gears. And I also put this out there on social media um, and kind of asked uh, some of my followers what, uh, what, what are those trends for them as well. So, so some of these will be my own and, and some will, will be uh, from, from those responses and I'll give proper credit uh, for those. In no particular order, what really grinds my gears? You know what really grinds my gears? First up, overhype of certain products more most specifically buffalo trace products stuff like weller special reserve or just regular buffalo trace or colonel eh taylor or eagle rare um not to even mention the btac line or uh stag jr or almost anything the buffalo trace puts out uh, blanton's uh, obviously uh with, with the exception of maybe like uh, ancient age or uh, or benchmark right so there's always this this hype and clamor for for anything Buffalo Trace, and this isn't me throwing shade at Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace makes amazing products. Uh, they they don't make a bourbon that I don't like, right? Um, but at the end of the day, they don't like regular Buffalo Trace isn't the greatest thing in the world. It's good, especially at the price point, but it's not the most amazing product out there. Um, so the the fact that if I were to try to go buy a bottle right now at my local store, it'd be a limit one for Buffalo Trace. I, I could only buy one bottle at a time if they have any in stock. Uh, Waller Special Reserve, a fantastic, you know, kind of beginner uh, weeded bourbon, um, you almost have to buy this on the secondary market at four times retail, which is way overvalued for what it actually is, right? Um, and, and, and not to mention any of the other um, uh, of the Weller lines. So I, I just don't fully understand that hype and where it comes from and, and if, if it's ever gonna, going to go away. It just grinds my gears because there's so many other great bourbons out there that... Um, I don't understand the the level of desire uh, for for even the simplest, uh, the most basic of the Buffalo Tr Trace releases. Um, so that is one that really grinds my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? Another thing that really grinds my gears, uh, and this is more of a bourbon community thing, is the hate. That and this kind of plays off of my first one too. The hate uh, 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 in the bourbon community that is out there for Blanton's uh, itself, the product Blanton's. Now, this is kind of a a, a funny. Uh, this is kind of a weird take because you know um, there's th this hype around Blanton's, right? Uh, especially if you are uh, newer in in bourbon or uh, maybe you don't drink a lot of bourbon, but you've heard of Blanton's and, um, and there's this, this really clamor and there, there's really this desire uh, for people to, to, to try to find and seek and, and buy Blanton's, right? And Blanton's is a great bourbon. It's really, really good. So the part of this that, that, that drives me nuts is um, anytime you know, I'm on a bourbon forum, whether it's on Facebook or Reddit or somewhere else, uh, and, and somebody you know throws you know throws out a picture uh, they got a bottle of Blanton's uh, or or Blanton's is brought up. Um, there's this rush to judgment like oh Blanton's is overhyped. Blanton's isn't that great. Blanton's you know isn't worth whatever you paid for it. Blanton's isn't this. Blanton's isn't that. Um, Blanton's sucks. Blanton's is terrible. Um, and there's just this, this real kind of hate and vitriol <laughs> out there uh, amongst um, uh, especially seasoned members of, of, of the bourbon community, those, those, that, uh, those of us that have, uh, you know, kind of 
further along in our bourbon journey, there tends to be this kind of hate uh, around Blanton's. Um, now, I myself certainly think that it's overhyped. Uh, I think if you're paying um, a certain amount over retail, that it, it, it loses value at that point. Um, but I'm not going to hate on somebody because they're trying to buy it. I'm not going to hate on somebody because they overpaid for it. I'm not going to, or because I think they overpaid for it. I'm not going to hate on somebody because they're excited they found a bottle of it. Just accept that there are people out there that love Blanton's and let them enjoy that and, and let them make, let that make them happy. And, and if you personally think Blanton's is the worst thing ever, um, then whatever, fine. You don't need to comment on, you know, you don't need to rain on their parade. You don't need to throw in your, your keyboard warrior comments about how terrible it is. Um, just let it be, man. Let it be. You know what really grinds my gears? All right, and this next one comes from RWP Supply on Instagram. So uh, check out at RWP Supply on Instagram. Um, this, the, the, the person behind this post, his name is Ed. Ed says... Whiskey snobs, like we get it. You spend a ton of money buying bottles or drinks at bars. That's cool, but it doesn't make you any better at telling me what, what I'll like to drink. And then those very same snobs lose track of the simple pleasures of a cheap booze. They take all the fun out of getting drunk. Um, so uh, I definitely agree that uh, one thing that really grinds my gears is whiskey or bourbon snobs. Um, this idea that um, and I think there are less and less of these uh, out there. Uh, I think when, I, when, you know, if you go back maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, um, there, there, there was a bit more snobbery um, in, in whiskey. Uh, I think that's slowly been fading out, but you're always going to have it, right? One of the whiskey snobs are one of the reasons that I was kind of nervous to, to get into bourbon because when you're first dipping your toes into it, like, uh, it's kind of intimidating if, if you know, you, you don't always know what you're talking about, but you, you want to you'd be able to ask questions. You don't want to sound like an idiot. You don't want people to treat you like an idiot. Uh, but at the same time, you don't know what you don't know, right? Um, so this the idea that there's some, you know, whiskey snob out there that if you go to a bar and you sit next to this person and you order a, um, a Weller Antique 107 uh, on the rocks and he's puffs at you and thinks and says something like, ah, you should should never put ice in your in your bourbon or or whatever like that that kind of thing or if you are talking about a certain brand but you you're excited about it but you don't know the, the full history of it or whatever and, and that person thinks you're an idiot or calls you an idiot or makes you feel like an idiot for uh for being out there or um or like like ed said in that post that you know somebody out there that you know thinks you should only drink and uh top shelf stuff and, and doesn't realize that all those hidden gems uh, of, of the cheaper bottom shelf booze that, that's out there. So, um, so yeah, whiskey snobs definitely grind my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? This next one comes from Susie, uh, Susie Cousins, a uh, uh, friend of the show. Um, she did a, uh, an episode of Talking Bourbons and Babies. Uh, with me previously, so you can check that out. I'll throw that up here. Uh, she is at Sounds Like Bourbon on Instagram. Um, uh, her her contribution, she says, bourbon hoarders, people who excessively bunker without any intentions of sharing or opening bottles. This one's a big one for me. Now I get it. It's a free market. And you can do whatever you want. You have the means. You have the money. You can buy as many bottles of. Uh, 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 you know, if you want to go to the store and buy the entire stock of a certain brand or whatever, you have the right to do that. That's fine. Um, but like she says, the people that do that excessively uh, and, and don't really have a plan on drinking it. I'm not saying you have to buy a bottle and, and, and open it as soon as you bring it home or anything like that. But it is excessive if you're sitting on... 20 bottles of Eagle Rare and you maybe you drink a you go through a, a bottle a year or a bottle every uh, you know maybe two bottles a year something like that like that seems a bit excessive to me uh, and, and at that point I feel like um, you're kind of pushing the boundaries there especially if you're, you're buying stuff and you know that you're never going to open it um, I, I, I've heard of people that you know buy, buy a bottle and, and they say oh this you know 
not even for a special occasion, this isn't going to be open. Now, there's always exceptions to every rule. I have a bottle that, that uh, I bought that I'm waiting until Max turns 21 that we're going to drink together. Um, so that's something that I've bought that I've set back that I don't plan to open for a really long time. So there are certain instances where, where, where that's, that's okay behavior. Um, but again, uh, I think the key point is excessive. Like people that do that excessively um, and, and just have this kind of massive library of bottles that, you know, w may never get opened in, in, in their time. So um, that really grinds my gears too. Good one, Susie. You know what really grinds my gears? We have another one here from Ed at RWP Supply on Instagram. Uh, he says, fake history, uh, and then gives us an example. Making your new company or batch appear as though it has 100 years of lineage behind it, whether it be by packaging or the story they tell. Uh, we get this a lot in bourbon, right? Um, a new brand uh, or a new company comes up, maybe they buy the rights to an old brand and, and they, they give you all the old brand's history, but really they're putting out, you know, a brand new whiskey, a brand new bourbon up uh, at, at that. Um, a recent example is, um, uh, this is a super recent example, um, the brand OKI, right? Um, not even a, an, an old or revered brand, but uh, the OKI name was started by the people at New Riff when they were sourcing before they were producing their own, their, their own distillate and selling their own bourbon. Um, once they started putting their own product on the market, they stopped the OKI brand. Um, and then just recently, within the last year and a half or so, another company bought the rights to the name OKI and are putting out you know, their own product or sourcing their own product uh, under the OKI label. Um, that, to me, and, and I haven't tried any of the new OKI. I actually never even had a chance to try the old OKI. Uh, but that to me is a little disingenuous. Um, you're, you're banking on that brand recognition, that name recognition, um, but it's completely different people behind it. Uh, you know, the probably potentially sourcing it from different partners and, and so on and so forth. So, and that's to say nothing of, of the people that, that buy the rights to a name um, uh, that maybe was, wasn't was around, ha, you know, has been gone for for decades and then they bring it back. Now, some companies do that and they, they do it, uh, I think, the right way. Um, there's uh, an Ohio company called SE Magnolia um, where uh, that's, a, that's a very old brand. Uh, they bought the rights to that name and they're putting uh, bourbon out under that label's name, but they're not trying to hide that. They, they're, they're upfront about it. Um, uh, they're just kind of reviving the label and the name because they, 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 they liked it. Uh, they're not trying to sell themselves as this is the same stuff that, that would have been put out back then. Um, but the, the idea of, of kind of trying to, to hoodwink your... Uh, your potential buyers into into thinking that that you're producing something that's not um, uh, that's something that really grinds my gears as well. You know what really grinds my gears? Uh, this next one comes to us from at whiskey fi uh, so w h i s k e f y. Um, uh, they say people that jump on the Facebook groups and only post their flexes. Um, I, I get that. Uh, the Facebook groups are, are full of that, especially when they're doing the whole bourbon uh, in in my car, crotch shot of the bottle and, and the watch and, and and the fancy car logo on the steering wheel, right? Showing off that, that BTAC bottle they got or that Pappy bottle they got or, or, or you know, some like really revered uh, special bottle that they were able to pick up. That does get annoying. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I'm going to post my flexes too. <laughs> if, if I'm able to come across something that, uh, that I'm pretty excited about that, that I, I don't get the chance to, to pick up or buy every day, those are probably going to be the bottles I post over um, 
you know, a, a bottle of Evan Williams bottled and bond. Even though I have no qualms against posting uh, my score of a bottle of Evan Williams bo bottled and bond, but I'm more likely to post that uh, that flex than I am uh, that bottom shelf crap. But I get I get the point. Uh, I get the point, especially when when it comes in those bourbon crop shots. You know what really grinds my gears. And the last thing that really grinds my gears uh, in the bourbon, or actually this one in the, just the whiskey industry in general, is um, uh, misogyny or sexism, or um, you know treating uh, women um, differently uh, in 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 this industry. And and this really comes from something that um, I think has definitely improved in the industry uh, uh, over the years. And. And there's been amazing women that have done amazing work to, to, to really come out of this. You know, your Peggy No Stevens, your, um, your Jackie Zycans, your, your Marion Eves, um, your Andrea Wilson uh, uh, from Mictors. Uh, so, again, this is something that's come a long way, but, but as the, the, something that's reared its ugly head in, in kind of recent times uh, is, is this idea of... Uh, of sexism or, or misogyny in the industry, and um, there was an instance uh, that that took place um, w without getting into the into the nasty details. Uh, but uh, this quote unquote, you know, D-list celebrity that had his own whiskey brand, uh, this kind of uh, idea of a, of, a, of a flavored whiskey that that's out there. This person responded really um, negatively to uh, a post by um, a, a respected woman uh, in whiskey on Instagram and, and, and just kind of said some really crude and, and uh, nasty things to her. And that's something that has, again, just really reared its head uh, in, the, in the ugliest way recently. Um, and there is no room whatsoever uh, in not just bourbon, but just in life for uh, things like that. That is one big thing in general that just really grinds my gears. There are a lot of women out there that, that love whiskey, that love bourbon, um, that, that, that drink it, uh, that, that participate in it, that make it, that are part of the industry, um, and they deserve to be treated no differently than, than anyone else. Uh, this is not a good old boys uh, a network. Uh, the, we, uh, the bourbon community um, is inclusive and, and, and should always be that way. Um, so there's no room for, for, for any of that uh, nast nastiness or, uh, or, or whatever. So um, the, the beautiful thing though is in response to, to that particular in instance that I'm referencing, we saw this great outpouring of respect and love for um, the the person that, that was insulted, and this great outpouring of condemnation of that behavior and that attitude that led to this whole ordeal in the first place. So um, uh, that's what's so great about the bourbon community. Again, is that the the vast majority of this community. It, are, are amazing people and are inclusive and are uh, welcoming and um, I know this community is even so much more nice and and, and uh, helpful than, than I ever imagined uh, uh, before I started my channel so uh, there's no room for for that other stuff so so get it out of here cut it out and that people is what grinds my gears all right well that's all I have for you today Thank you so much for listening to my complain session. Let, let me get all of that off of my chest. Thanks again to all of the people um, that contributed as well. Um, and let me know what really grinds your gears. Is there anything that I didn't mention uh, that, that, that drives you crazy about the bourbon or whiskey community or industry? Uh, hit me up in the comments below and let me know. All right, you can follow Max and myself on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at Bourbon and a Baby on all three of those platforms. Uh, and you can buy some Bourbon and a Baby merchandise at our shop on Spreadshirt. I'll throw that link in the description below.